agricultural practices. Cultivation of crops involves many activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time. These activities are called agricultural practices. These are preparation of soil, sowing, adding manure and fertilizers, irrigation, protecting from weeds, harvesting and storage. In order to grow properly, plants need soil that consists of a mixture of clay gravel, air, water, humus and microbes. Major steps involved in preparing the soil are plowing and leveling. Plowing by oxen. Traditionally, Indian farmers plow their fields using their oxen. Nowadays, plowshares are usually made of iron. This method is very time consuming. Plowing by tractor. With the turn of the century, tractors began to be used for plowing. A large area of land could be plowed in a very little time. Leveling. It is done with a wooden plank for uniform distribution of water. Selection of seeds involves precaution as the seeds should be healthy and disease free. Seeds should be sown at the right depth and at a distance from each other. Sowing of seeds manually is known as broadcasting. They are also sown using a seed drill. Enrichment of soil as plants grow in a particular field year after year, soil loses its fertility. This is because the nutrients present in the soil get used up. In order to maintain the fertility of the soil, the soil needs to be enriched from time to time. Enrichment of soil is done by manure and fertilizers. Fertilizers Fertilizers are the substance which improve the fertility of soil and help the plant to grow and synthesize more food. Types of fertilizers. There are three main types of chemical fertilizers on the basis of availability of nutrients from them. Nitrogen fertilizers, phosphate fertilizers, potassium fertilizers. Irrigation. Water supply to the fields through sources other than rain is called irrigation. The main sources of water for irrigation projects are tube wells, rivers, wells, etc. Groundwater reservoirs are also used for irrigating the fields. Traditional methods of irrigation The water from wells, lakes and canals is lifted up by different methods in different regions for irrigation purposes. Cattle or human labor is used in traditional methods of irrigation. So these methods are cheaper but less efficient. The various traditional ways are moat or pulley system, chain pump, rehat or liver system. We commonly use pumps for lifting water. These pumps run with the help of diesel, biogas, electricity and solar energy. Modern methods of irrigation. The use of modern methods of irrigation helps us to use water economically. Two main methods used for irrigation these days are sprinkler system and drip system. Sprinkler system. Sprinkler system is more useful on uneven land where there is lack of sufficient water. Perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals. When water is allowed to flow through the main pipe with the help of a pump, it escapes through the rotating nozzles. Water gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining. Sprinkler system of irrigation is very useful for sandy soil. Drip system. In this system, the water falls drop by drop just at the position of the roots. So it is called drip system. It is the best technique for watering fruit plants, gardens and trees. The system provides water to plants drop by drop. Water is not wasted at all. Drip system of irrigation is very effective where water availability is poor. Weeds are the unwanted plants that grow along with the main crop and compete with them for sunlight, nutrients, water, space, etc. 
Specific types of weeds grow with a particular crop. Removal of weeds is called weeding. Some common examples of weeds are Amaranthus, Chenopodium, Wild Oat, Parathenum, Convolvulus, etc. Weeds can be removed by pulling them out by hand, spraying weedy sides, and by insects that eat them. Harvesting is the final stage of the agricultural task. Fully grown crops are cut and gathered. This is either done manually or by using harvester. Combine. Storage of grains. After harvesting of crop, farmers store grain in bulk using different types of storage structures made of different available materials. The pre-treatment necessary for better storage is cleaning and drying of the grain and fumigation using different chemicals which can kill insects and pests. The structure design of storage pots and its construction also play a vital role in storage. Storage losses constitute a major share of food grain loss in post-production operations. Some biotic and abiotic factors are responsible for loss of quality of food grains, poor germinability of seeds, etc. These factors are insects, rodents, microbes, bacteria, fungi, moisture and temperature.